Ireland. This battle only lasted one day and it was the only, not the major one, it was the only major sea battle of the First World War. It was quite embarrassing really that Britain and Germany had spent so much money building up dreadnoughts before the First World War and actually it would only feature in one day of warfare. The Navy became much more important in terms of protecting supply ships and things like that than it ever was in terms of battles. So on the 31st of May the Battle of Jutland started and it went on through the night into the 1st of June 1916. Our fleet was led by um, Admiral Jellicoe and the German fleet was le led by Admiral Scheer. So, what happened then? Well, basically, it was indecisive. Nobody really won. If anything, it was almost a draw. But after the battle, both of the admirals claimed that they'd had a victory. And the reason for that was, is the Germans had downed 14 of our ships and killed around 6,000 men. And we had only brought about 11 ships of theirs down and nearer 2,500 men. So they had done much better in terms of numbers than we had. But to be honest, that didn't make too much difference in the end. Because what we did is on the night, we followed the German ships back to port. And then we blockaded them in there for the rest of the war. So for the rest of the two years of war, the German Navy never came back out because the British ships are blockading them in. And in the end, this resulted in 1918, the Germans having a mutiny in the Navy because they felt that they weren't being able to do anything to help in terms of the war effort. Also, another key thing was, is that in terms of us blockading them in, they couldn't get any food in to the people who were in Germany, so we started to starve them out. So those sorts of things made a massive, massive difference. So in the long run, we really won the Battle of Jutland because we did that. But certainly, in the short term, it looked like Germany had been more successful because they'd killed more of our people. And it came to light that what had ended up happening was, was that the British had been let down in the Battle of Jutland by faulty shells that weren't exploding properly when they hit the um, German ships. And also, they didn't want anyone to know this, but well, they'd been bringing the ammunition up to put into the big guns on the top of the ships. But stupidly, the British had just left the ammunition on the top deck. So when they were then getting hit by the German shells, the whole boats were just exploding in a matter of minutes. So the Battle of Jutland is the only sea battle in the First World War, and really the results of it were indecisive. The U-boats and the convoy system. So the other part of the war at sea is this. And the U-boats are simply submarines. And the Germans call them that because they use a really long word for underwater boats. Now, they were the absolute pride of the, the German Navy. They were so impressed with them. They used them in various different ways. But the main thing that the submarines managed to do for Germany is the U-boats started to bomb supply ships coming to Britain. So because they were taking down supply ships, it meant that yes, we were short of things on the Western Front, but we were also short of things on the home front as well. But it did cause a problem for them, because in 1915, a German U-boat fired on the Lusitania. And unbeknownst to the Germans, there were 128 American passengers on this passenger ship. Now, the reason why they said that they'd done it is they said that they thought the ship was carrying war cargo for Britain, which it may well have been, because the Americans were helping us behind the scenes to fight in the First World War. But the problem was, is America at this point were neutral, so no American people should have been killed because of the First World War. Now, there probably was war cargo on there because the ship sank in 18 minutes. And if it's going to sink that quickly, there's probably definitely been ammunition and weapons on board. Now, the Neely joined the War America because of this. But the Kaiser was so scared of this happening, because he thought Germany would lose if America joined, that he agreed to do unrestricted restricted submarine warfare. So he restricted who they could actually fire on. So they didn't dare, the Germans, fire at anything that they might think was a passenger ship or anything American anything that you know might bring America into the war. So for two years, that certainly did work. But the problem that then happened was, 
was in 1917, because the Kaiser was losing and he was so desperate, he reintroduced unrestricted submarine warfare. So he allowed his German U-boats to fire on any ships again. So that's one of the reasons that America joined the war, because they were like, well, you said you weren't going to do that, and now you're now firing on our ships again. So America come in because of that, and as I mentioned on another podcast,